So in this video, we're going to be looking at the following example. Um, we have a series, power series, that's the sum from n equals infinity of 3 to the n times x plus 4 to the n over the square root of n. And we're interested in finding the interval com of convergence and the radius of convergence for this series. So notice, um, first of all, um, where this series is centered. So I have x plus 4 to the n, which I could also think of as x minus negative 4 to the n. Remember my general form for a series um, would be some constants here in terms of n times x minus a to the n. And this thing is centered at a. So in this case I'm centered at a equals negative 4. Okay, that's also our other way of figuring out the center is saying okay what x value here would make the inside equal to 0. So that would be negative 4. Now I want to try to answer the question about where this converges or diverges. Well, I do have exponential type terms here. Okay, 3 to the n and x plus 4 to the n are both those exponential type. Um, so I want to think about using the ratio test. Okay, so we'll start with the ratio test. And we'll see what information that gives us. So if x is not negative 4. We know that this series will converge at the center, so what's happening outside of that? We'll look at the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of a n plus 1 over a n, okay, just like in our definition of the ratio test. So I have the limit as n goes to infinity. My a n plus 1 is 3 to the n plus 1 times x plus 4 to the n plus 1 over the square root of n plus 1. And I'm dividing by a n, so I'm going to be multiplying by the reciprocal here, so I'm going to have root n over 3 to the n x plus 4 to the n. Okay, so I need to do some simplifying of what's in here using my exponent rules and things. Um, I find it helpful to rewrite the exponent when I have the sum of these powers, like 3 to the n plus 1 is 3 to the n times 3 x plus 4 to the n plus 1 is x plus 4 to the n times x plus 4. I've got my root n, root n plus 1, 3 to the n, and x plus 4 to the n. Okay, so we can see that the x plus 4 to the n's cancel, and the 3 to the n's. Okay, so what does this leave me with? So I have a limit as n goes to infinity. This is just positive 3, so that can come outside of the absolute value. Um, x plus 4 needs to stay inside my absolute value bars because I could have some value of x that makes that quantity negative. And then I have this root n over root n plus 1. So it might be helpful to write that as a single square root as n over n plus 1. Okay, so I'm going to try to think about what's happening with this as n goes to infinity. Well, notice that um, the only part that I actually need to take the limit of is, is this part that has n. This stuff here, um, I can pull out in front of my limit notation, treat it like a constant. So I have 3 times the absolute value of x plus 4 times the limit as n goes to infinity of this root n over n plus 1. Um, and one way for me to figure out what my limit is, is, is inside this square root, I could divide the numerator and denominator by n. So I have 1 over 1 plus 1 over n. Okay. I could also realize that I do have the highest power um, of n in the numerator and the denominator being the same, so I could think about pulling that limit notation inside here and saying this is going to be like the square root of 1. So notice that this limit will come out to 3 times x plus 4 times 1, or just 3 times this absolute value of x plus 4. Okay. So I've determined that my limit in the ratio test is equal to this quantity here that depends on x. So this is the first time we've seen an example where we got something that depended on x instead of getting a number for our final answer. My ratio test tells me that the limit value that I get here, okay, in this case this is my L, um, if that limit value is less than 1, my series converges. Okay, so now I can say so by the ratio test, okay, the series converges for those x values okay, for the x values where 3 times x plus 4 
is less than one. Okay, what I'm not going to do is stick like a less than one over here because it's not true that 3 times x plus 4 is always less than 1. When I got 0 before, it was true that 0 is always less than 1. There's certain x values here that will make this 3 times x plus 4 less than 1 and other x values that will make it bigger than 1. So we're not going to write it over there. I'm going to separately say, okay, I got this value for my limit, so my series must converge for the x's that make this, this inequality here, this 3x plus 4, less than 1. Okay, so how can I turn that into um, being able to answer the question about radius and interval of convergence? So notice that I can divide both sides here by 3. Okay, so that tells me I want the x values where the absolute value of x plus 4 is less than 1 third. Okay, this means, okay, we want the distance between x and the center to be less than one third. Okay, between x and negative four to be less than one third. Okay, you could also um, match this up to um, what we were saying in the, the third part of the theorem that when I would have x minus a less than some value over here, that value that's on the other side is my radius of convergence. Okay, so we're finding that r is one third, but I find it's also helpful to be able to draw a picture. Okay, we knew that this was centered at negative four, saying that the absolute value of x plus four has to be less than one third is the same thing as saying my x has to be between negative four minus a third and negative four plus a third. Okay, so I know my interval's got to be in here. So, so far I know, so the radius of convergence is r equals one third. Okay, that's my distance from the center to an endpoint. But what I don't know yet is whether my series converges or diverges at negative four minus a third and at negative four plus a third. So this is the part where I have to test those endpoints. In our series. So what was our series to start with? Well, our series is the sum from n equals one to infinity of three to the n times x plus four to the n over root n, okay? We now know that this series converges for all x between negative four minus a third and negative four plus a third, but I just don't know if I wanna include those endpoints or not, or one or the other. So I need to plug in each of those values separately, okay? So we're gonna plug in x equals negative four minus one third and see whether the series converges there. And we're gonna plug in x equals negative four plus one third into our series. Okay, so when we say plug in, we're replacing the x right here in the series with this number and then with this number. Okay, so then we'll get a just a sum of numbers and we'll be able to use one of our, our plain uh, convergence tests from earlier to determine whether that series converges or diverges. So initially here, plug in negative four minus a third, so this is three to the n, negative four minus a third, plus four to the n, all over root n. And before I try to analyze whether that converges or diverges, I wanna try to simplify that as much as possible. So notice that I have a negative four and a plus four, so those, those cancel, okay? I have three to the n, and then I have this negative one-third to the n. So notice that negative one-third to the n is like negative one over three to the n. So I can write that as negative one to the n over three to the n. So notice that my three to the n's cancel. So this series simplifies to just the sum from n equals one to infinity of negative one to the n over root n, okay? So I, now I need to use a convergence test on that series. So what do we notice about this series? 
well it's an alternating series okay we have bn equals 1 over root n being greater than 0 notice that my bn plus 1 would be 1 over root n plus 1 so I need to show the bn plus 1 is less than or equal to bn so notice that for n greater than or equal to 1 it's definitely true that n plus 1 is bigger than n okay so root n plus 1 is bigger than root n so 1 over root n plus 1 is definitely smaller than 1 over root n. Okay, what's the other thing that we need? Well, we need the limit of the bn's to be 0, but we notice that the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over root n is 0. Okay, so our sum n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n over root n does converge by AST. Okay, so if we have all this, this work here, we showed that this series at this endpoint converges. Okay, this series converges. Let me give myself a little bit more room here. That means that we're, we would include that endpoint. Okay. So we're saying, so include x equals negative 4 minus 1 third. We're going to include that left endpoint. Okay, so what about the right endpoint? Here at x equals negative 4 plus 1 third, we're going to replace x in our series with that value. So I have the sum from n equals 1 to infinity, 3 to the n, negative 4 plus 1 third, plus 4 to the n over root n. I want to make sure I simplify this first. So the negative 4 and the 4 cancel, so I have 3 to the n, and then this is 1 over 3 to the n. So that would be 1 to the n over 3 to the n, but 1 to the n is 1, so this is 1 over 3 to the n. Okay, so notice that this comes down to just a sum of 1 over root n, which diverges okay by p series test since we have p equals a half and that's smaller um, than one we know that the p series diverges for all p less than or equal to one so what does that mean well it means don't include that value so exclude x equals negative four plus one third well, this means that the interval of convergence, then, that we have is from negative 4 minus 1 third up to negative 4 plus 1 third, including negative 4 minus 1 third and not including um, negative 4 plus 1 third. Okay. So that would be our final answer here. And again, the reason that we had to check these endpoints separately is that um, if I plugged in those values, the negative 4 plus 1 third and the negative 4 minus 1 third, um, in for x in our ratio test, I would end up with 1 for the, for the value of the limit. And we know the ratio test is inconclusive at 1. So that's why we had to use a different test for each of those x values at the endpoint. Okay, so we found our radius of convergence here was one third. Interval of convergence is between these these two values, um, and I can leave it like that, or I could get um, the the single fraction there. So let's see, this is negative four minus one third. Um, this would be negative twelve over three. So this would be negative thirteen thirds. Okay, comma. Let's see, this would be negative twelve over three, um, negative eleven thirds. Okay, so you can simplify it or leave it um, in this, this form here. So let me know if you have any questions on this example.